Hey, my friend, it's Keith. Listen, if you're looking for some awesome bad to the bone accessories for your lawn care and landscaping business, look no further than Ballard Products. For instance, Ballard has a new product called the Ox Lock. It's an anti-theft trailer hitch lock with a built-in alarm system. And this thing's bad to the bone. I got one on the way myself. And the owner of Ballard Products, his name is Corey Ballard. You might have seen him on Instagram. And this guy stands behind everything he sells in the online store because he's been in the industry 30 years himself. He's one of us. He's banging on this new ox lock with a sledgehammer and he can't get through it. And even if you could cut through it, which you can cut through any lock, if you give someone enough time, there's a built-in alarm that's going off the entire time. So if that isn't protecting a big investment like your landscaping trailer, you know, I don't know what is. But anyways, Ballard Products on the website is ballard-inc.com and they've got mow and blow accessories. They've got safety accessories, all types of stuff. And they gave me a promo code Keith10 for you to use. It'll save you 10% off of anything in the online store. So check it out. Go to ballard-inc.com, ballard-inc.com. Pick out whatever you want. Use the promo code Keith10. It'll save you 10%. Enjoy the show. What's up, guys? So I'm sitting here right now with my very good friend, Rob. And if you've heard me talk about Rob in my videos and podcasts, Rob has been a mentor to me for like going on 15 years. And we actually just ate dinner. And I said, Rob, let's go sit in my truck and make a recording. But what I want to do for you is we're going to conversate. And you get to listen to this now as a podcast. And why I want to do this is because the level and topic of conversation that Rob and I have leave me with huge epiphanies and insights that help me in my business and with understanding relationships, talking with customers on two different sides. And Rob's right next to me, and I want him to talk about this as well. I haven't even warned him the topic, but he's finding out now. (laughs) On one side, you got this equity and this trust. And on the other side, you got the contract. And they're two totally different things. And you can think because your customer is a nice person or you're a nice person or you really care about them. All that stuff does go a long way. But there's also a contractual side that can help you or bite you. I want you to put your learning cap on and we won't go too deep into this and pay attention to the context and the consciousness around what we're going to talk about. But I'm actually just the student here. Rob has been traveling and now being asked to speak about the, some of the things that we're going to talk about in great depth and detail. So don't let your brain think that you automatically know what he's talking about because there's more to it. Just for some insight. What's up, Rob? Not too much. How are you doing? <laughs> it's a historical debate is what you're pointing towards ultimately. And over the centuries and over the generations, there has been a lot of manipulation and misuse of definitions and labels and things like that. When people accept that or fall under that spelling, words, the craft of using words with multiple definitions and things of that nature, then it all benefits somebody's self-interest. So it's a pretty deep subject, so it's hard to stay on the surface because you don't get the value. Yes. But if you go deep, then people can lose track of it at different points. Like some people lose track of it right away because they're not necessarily very motivated or attracted to depth, right? They're moving fast. They got to get bills paid. They got to, right, you know, ta- <laughs> a list of tasks to do. Yes. <laughs> and so they're just kind of skipping real fast along the surface. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying for conversations like this, they may check out of a conversation somewhat swiftly. We've been forced into learning a whole lot of different skills at a basic level so we can function in society and business to get by. And I've heard one of my mentors say, and I don't remember exactly who, but sometimes it's that's good, but it's good to dive really, really deep on one specific topic and get the full granularity and transformation out of it. Yeah, well, that's where transformation is, obviously. You can't have deep shifts with the same mindset, right? Things have to shift. And if you're going to shift in profound ways, then you have to go to profound depths. Like rarely do you find gold nuggets just laying on the sidewalk, right? You got to kind of hunt for them and dig for them and then you find them. 
where they are, not where you prefer them to be. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. So where would you like to go from here? More of the Untrapped Podcast right after this. Looking to maximize your production in the field? Ballard Products has over 300 products that can help you get the most out of your efforts every day. Ballard Products. Whether you are looking to get a better cut, keep your gear on your machine, keep your expensive equipment clean and safe, or just get the most out of your machines, Ballard has you covered. Ballard Products. Jump onto our easy-to-use updated website at ballard-inc.com to get your gear ordered today. Keep grinding, Keep grinding stay, stay safe, safe, and have a great season. Ballard. Make sure to use the code KEITH10 to save 10% on our full line of gear. That's KEITH10. This is Untrapped with Keith Kalfas. So you and your customer, say, landscaping. Customer calls, wants a job. You go there, you walk around the property, you give them a price and say it's five grand to do some work. And you put out line items. And then the customer signs and you know you're supposed to get a signature and you don't really, really know why. And if the customer backed out or something happened, you'd be in a tizzy. If maybe you'd have to go just find a different job, you might have a bunch of jobs. What if the customer actually, you do the job and they decide not to pay or then they want something different or they say that's not what they expected. And now you have this controversy or this, this, this problem. Or what if the customer was... Not only was it just a misunderstanding, what if the customer was intentionally trying to get one up on you? So then you have a contract. This can go both ways in many different ways. But you thought in all your heart and mind that you were having a great intention and you wanted to do a great job. And a little did you know, you were actually falling short in the communication, building an expectation with the customer that you didn't even know that you were doing. And now the customer is legitimately upset and has a real reason why. Because them and their family thought they were getting a certain thing and then you didn't provide that and now you've got a problem it can go a thousand different ways but what is a contract how about that and what is the reason for a contract and where do they come from well there's legal contracts and there's lawful contracts and we don't use lawful contracts much anymore except between ourselves in relationship so some contracts are expressed and some are implied both are still binding contracts If I give you something of value as a gift and you abuse it, you're violating an implied contract to take care of it or to respect it. Because if you breach that, I don't think I would give you something valuable again as a gift, right? So that's the equity you're talking about. That's an implied contract. That example is an implied contract. So if you go to a legal contract, there's less elements to make a legal contract binding. It's usually just offer, acceptance, and consideration. So those are like three elements. You see a lot of people are like, you already lost me. Damn. (laughs) Lawful contracts, there's like eight elements. So again, like you got to go deep if you're really going to sort through this stuff and really have profound benefits from it. Just most people don't have the time or the patience or even the discipline to stay present with a learning project. In my landscaping business. I've only actually been ripped off twice. Once, the customer happened to be a criminal defense attorney. And the second, the other time, the person owned a debt collection business. Then was it an attorney? Um, interesting. Yeah, it was. You shared those documents with me. So the thing about attorneys is they're very aware about the legal contract industry. And I'm not saying all attorneys are all that bad or any of that stuff. I'm just saying it just happened to be. Right. But I'm saying that that all attorneys are very well aware of that legal contract environment where most people aren't. They're like, well, if I need that, I'll just go get an attorney. Uh huh. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But clearly what you can see is there's a lack of understanding from he who is going to be most affected. It's interesting. So where's the line where they start going too far down the line? Who's they? Men and women who are understand the legal system and they know what they can and can't get away with legally. So therefore their moral code is values. replaced by their legal position. Yes. And so I, I don't understand the question yet. Where's the line? Yeah. Well, it usually starts out where most attorneys, I presume, they want to do good. They want to help. 
They want to be value added and take care of people and all that. And hopefully most of them can hold on to that. But what winds up happening is it's in an industry and it's a commercial industry and therefore profit and self-interest and thing because it's at one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, one, bam, 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 for weeks and months and years, bam, 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 decades, bam, bam. Right. So it becomes an assembly line of getting through it and getting paid. So they get really good at where's my interest? How can I maximize my interest? Right. I have a family. I've got kids. They want to go to college. My wife depends on me or my husband or whatever. And because it's not a moral industry, it's a legal industry. This is where the gold comes out. You keep going. <laughs> That's what becomes valuable. That what becomes necessary to keep an eye on. So you get good at keeping an eye on the legal positions. You know, it's funny. My last And so now business. you're making offers to your clients. Will you accept this? Mm. This is good for you. And then you shade it a little. Because it'll be less work, but you can make more money and they're fundamentally taken care of. And the odds that something's going to happen to them or this adversary is going to make these types of claims. or So you play a legal chess game in your head and you try to work out what's going to be the least amount of aggravation for the most amount of benefit and for a reasonable amount of protection right, for your client. And again, I'm not saying all attorneys are like that, but this is like how the pressure over all those years and weeks and decades, when you get good at it that way, your job becomes easy and profitable, becomes routine. But we're just talking about the difference between legal and lawful. So attorneys are legal practitioners. They practice at law. So there's a deep rabbit hole about why they call themselves lawyers when they're attorneys, but we'll skip over that. What is the definition of attorney? Attorney speaks legalese and works under statutory authority. Need to turn over. <laughs> You're digging. Yeah, if you look it up in the legal dictionaries, an attorney is one who attorns, A-T-T-O-R-N. So if people want to know what that means, I'd have them look it up rather than me tell them. Ah, okay. So what is the difference? You said there's law, but then there's statutes, acts, and codes. Like there's different things. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I talk about all this stuff, but I, I just, you know what I mean? I, I can overwhelm people quickly if I'm not careful because uh-huh. we're not really trained and conditioned to be interested in this, for one. For sure. And for two, there's a lot of confusion about what is this thing called law and what is its origin? Oh, you're into all types of stuff that's way beyond what anybody listening can even because I haven't. Right. They, and some of them may be interested in it, but Land very few of them. Are, yeah. Very few people are going to be able to make use of it today and have an impact in their life for their benefit, which is what they're sorting for. Right. Yeah. They're like, how is it going to benefit me right yeah. now? Or I'm going to fuck out of here. Yeah. But over a lifetime, it can have an amazing and profound impact on where you end up. Right. What kind of controversies you avoid, how much wealth that you can retain, how much intergenerational wealth you can make available. All that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the law is a very interesting thing. And there's a different legal system, but the law. Yeah, the legal system is a system. The law is something that was there before us, is here now, and will be here after us. What's the difference between legal and lawful? Today, my wife and I, we have something going on. I'll tell it later, not between us, just with a contractor. We're learning a lesson right now. My wife goes, but they can't do that. That's not legal. We've been trained to say that's not legal. Right. But what's becoming more and more common is that what's legal isn't lawful. Yeah. So you say you can't do that, but it is legal if it's in those yeah. legal jurisdiction in those terms. Well, we're taught that they mean the same thing. That's why I said, you know, it's kind of curious how attorneys call themselves lawyers because there was a period of time when you had lawyers and attorneys And now most people believe that all attorneys are lawyers and all lawyers are attorneys. So what is the difference? One ministers the law and the other one administers at law. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, one ministers the law. So he's standing in the river? That's one way of looking at it. If you're at the river, are you in the river? No. So if you're at the law, are you in the law? No, attorneys at law. Right. So it's subtle. It's like I said, words and the meanings of words and words with multiple definitions. And you're talking about misunderstandings with clients. And if you're not careful, you could be talking about two different things, but you both think you're agreeing wholeheartedly until it's time to deliver. 
and one thinks that they've been scammed and the other thinks that they're getting scammed. Right. So that's why definitions are important in legal contracts and even in lawful contracts often be definitions. And I would highly recommend that you put those in there so that definition. Yeah, because if you go to a legal dictionary like Black's Law Dictionary and you go looking through there, you'll find that one word, right, like person, look it up, has a lot of definitions. I'm a good person. Right. Every person should. This applies to all persons who, you know, that kind of stuff. And you go in the legal dictionary and look it up and find out that it has multiple definitions, many of which you would have never thought you would argue with me. It could never mean that. So a lot of the time, if you say I'm a good person, you really mean I'm a good man, I'm a good woman. But under the legal jurisdiction, a person is a corporation. Yep, a trust, right? It's an entity. So when they're talking about persons, they're probably not talking about the same thing you think they're talking about. So, And there's legal persons and lawful persons. <laughs> so a lawful person would be like a state national and we're in Michigan, so that would be a yeah, oh, Michiganian. So I never understood that. A state national. So it depends on what state you're in? Yes. Does a state national automatically have diplomatic immunity? Yes. They are the creators of government. They created a trust for their benefit. But most people don't understand how the Revolutionary War was conflict was resolved. We're taught in public schools that it was a conquest, but it was a settlement. The conflict was settled through peace treaties, and from those peace treaties arose constitutions, which are operating agreements. They're trust indentures. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. You could be like, what's the difference between, uh, I don't know if I want to go there. Yeah, see. I mean, they're great conversations, and everybody should be having them, and we should be learning them from school, and our families should be teaching us and preparing us to be good stewards of these sacred grif- gifts, these sacred grants, but we get distracted by things and we wind up volunteering for something other than, and then we complain. Stuck looking at Craigslist at new landscaping equipment, cameras at Best Buy. Well, if that is a duty that you have accepted, if that is part of your sacred trust, that's your duties and obligations to your sacred trust is to manifest a better place than you found. And it's through the expression of landscaping. Then those are the tools of your duties and obligations to your sacred trust that you've accepted. But if it's some job you're grinding out just to make money and pay bills and taxes, that might not be sacred stewardship. That might be survival oh, God. within a system that's owned by somebody else. Might be. All right. What's the difference between the United States and the United States of America? So in the federal law, you can see where there's a difference. And it goes back to that settlement of the Revolutionary War. So they were British colonists right before the Revolutionary War. And Britain is a vassal of Rome, the Roman Empire. Wow. And so you have... Roman interests, British interests, and then interests of the people who wanted to break free from those systems and self-govern. And that's essentially what America is known for, are those free and independent people who could self-govern. So in that settlement, they granted a government system which protects them from the British Empire and the Roman Empire imposing their mandates. Imposing their mandates. Yeah, their decrees, their... What is it? You said God created man and man... Created is, government? No, man is the judge of all things oh. and is judged by no man. <clears throat> now you're talking about the Roman global estate and the public charitable trust. But the human creature is subject to the Roman pontiff. You are just digging deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Essentially, in a Roman trust, which they consider to be a sacred trust, where they are trustees over a global estate. And within that global estate, they created a public charitable trust where they're to make sure that no soul is left behind because they want to help the human creature, the beast, the animal part, outgrow the law of the jungle and rise above that into a sacred stewardship that doesn't trespass or injure the rights and properties of others. Stick around as Keith returns with more of the Untrapped podcast in just a moment. 
Hey, if you're looking for what is probably the greatest software ever to run your business on, go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. You can create proposals, invoices, collect payments, even track your entire business directly on the Jobber smartphone app. And if you want to get a totally free trial of Jobber right now, open your browser, type in getjobber.com forward slash Keith. And if after the trial, you decide you want to sign up with Keith's link, you'll automatically get 20% off your first six months. So what are you waiting for? Go to getjobber.com forward slash Keith. The Untrapped Podcast continues. And so in that te- first testamentary trust of that global estate and that public charitable trust, it says two things. One is the spirit-filled man is the judge of all things, and he himself can be judged by no man. So you got to think about that a little bit. But essentially what that means is self-governing, and the only one that can judge him is our creator. Whatever the source is of all this stuff that man didn't create, nature, life, all that, that is the judge of each man, not one man over another man. If you're a sacred steward, so if you're spirit-filled, and when they say man, they're talking about a species, not a gender, right? Just like bear or eagle or lion, you have man. You have woe man. Yeah, half of all man have wombs. So that's where you have the womb man. We're one species. It's the politics that try to divide us into self-interest and more psychological warfare. Because they think we're lunatics, wards, and idiots. (laughs) Stuff like that. That's in one of the charters after the Civil War in Washington, D.C., those words. So that's the first thing. The spirit-filled man is the judge of all things, and he himself can be judged by no man. They're talking about spirit-filled men or women, ones with spiritual discernment that can discern the difference between trespass and injury and what your rights are. Your rights are anything that doesn't cause a wrong, and wrong is trespass and injury. It's fairly simple, but animals can't discern that difference. They can get angry. They can get vengeful. They can get prideful, right? They can indulge in gluttony and all that kind of stuff. They bite you. Those are the seven deadly sins or whatever they're called. But the second thing they said, and this is what you are alluding to, is but the human creature is subject to the Roman pontiff. So they're trustees over all the all of man who are still under the law of the jungle. So that's your What's public charitable trustee? trust. A trustee is a steward. What's a steward? A steward is one with duties and obligations to a trust. What's a trust? A trust is where somebody put property into a place where somebody has to take care of it for the benefit of someone else. Property. Is that when the cops come, they're just paying attention? They're like in a legal jurisdiction and they're paying attention to whose property or what? Yeah. Whose property is it and who can prove it is a big part of the law, trying to keep the peace. And adverse claims are probably the most common source of controversy and conflict and therefore trespass and injury when you start beating on each other or breaking people's things or trying to harm them. (laughs) When someone stands in front of a judge in a courtroom, they ran a red light and they're like, but the light was yellow. I'm a good person. You know, I was was like, well, fine. In the legal legal system, it's the letter of the law. In the lawful system, it's the soul and spirit of the law. So... You could break the letter of the law and not harm anybody or not injure anybody. And there's you running a red light. As long as you didn't hit somebody, cause an injury. God. <laughs> See, man, this is all wormholes. I've been talking to Rob about this for about four years now. He's taught me some shit. It's helped me in my business. You're like, how? Because I've been paying attention to every little tiny thing you say to the customer is all being recorded. Not technically or virtually, but through the eyes and ears of the other person. And you're creating all these agreements. So if a customer says, hey, uh, can you do this? And you say, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. What does that mean, Rob? Well, you just made a verbal contract. So it's express because they asked for it and you accepted the duty and obligation. Did you ask for consideration for that extra duty and obligation? Were you entitled to it? It's the change order. Or was it? Yeah. So if it's a change or an amendment, an expansion, you're not obligated to do it just because they asked for it. You could look at it and say, well, it really doesn't cost me that much. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll just do it for you. But you should make sure they know it's a gift and not something that they're entitled to. And, uh, and how do you do that? You give notice. You got to express it. 
can't be implied because they could have a different interpretation of what you just said, what it means. We're back to the difference of words and intentions. What is your intent and purpose for acceptance? What is their intent and purpose for asking? Their intent and purpose could be to milk you out of more value. Your intent and purpose is to give more goodwill. So you think you're giving more goodwill and they think they're getting away with milking you for more value. Was that good communication? Ah, uh, no. No, because now you're bleeding out where you don't have to and you're teaching them that they can take advantage of you. They just ask. Wow. So they'll just I ask guess again. I should started here. <laughs> Man, so how do you communicate verbally and make sure it matches in a contract and on paper and all that stuff? So, Well, in commerce, it's not really a system based on honor. It's based on the duties and obligations you can prove each of the parties has. It's not based on honor. Right. There's some that leaks into it, but that's not what it's based on. Based on the duties and obligations that you can prove each have. So that's why it's in writing. That's why attorneys are so always the saying. the record oh. states this. Yeah. And now, well, what is the definition of is, is? Like Bill Clinton said. Well, it all depends of what your definition of is, is. <sighs> what is the definition of is? Right. Exactly. So what is the definition of person? What is the definition of delivery? What is the definition Wait, Bill of. Bill Clinton is an attorney, isn't he? Yeah. So that's why attorneys have a bad reputation is because a lot of them really use wordcraft on purpose. Legally sounds like English, looks like English, but it's not. It's a private, copywritten commercial language. How can people, if they want to, is it okay, if not, fine, mm -hmm. learn more about you and your events and seminars or webinars to see if they even qualify? What's the next step? Nobody's excluded. We're not prejudiced or discriminatory. We don't discriminate, but we're non-commercial. We're non-political. And we're just a private group of friends that have an interest in the mutual exchange of lawful gifts and honor. So it's a very unconventional community, but it's very rewarding because you actually get to peel off a whole lot of stuff that you're subject to that causes tension, anxiety, confusion, misery, and suffering. Mm. And you get to understand how to immunize yourself from it, although you are among it. Give us the website, Rob. What is the, <laughs> how do, what's your TikTok? You ain't on TikTok. No, we don't do any social media. <laughs> We're not in the public very much. We have one face. That's a website. You can get some insights about who we are. We have an about page, we have some samples. We have some presenters that are members that present to our group. We do some seminars around the country. We just did one in Maui on Hawaii where we had five presenters for three weeks. And then when that concluded, we had four more presenters do Zoom meetings. But we're teaching people about law and history and history of law and what rights, titles, and interests are, how to make sure that they're yours and not that you just think they're yours, and how to protect them, things like that. And you can visit us at AmericanMeetingGroup.com and you can look through, see if that's something for you or not. It's pretty simple. I mean, I think everybody should have fundamentals and that way they can make informed decisions. And therefore, when you are signing things and giving consent, at least it's an informed consent. <laughs> because there's people that are hyper wealthy and have been at this for centuries, families and lineages, and they control a lot more than you would imagine. And therefore, your informed consent kind of gets taken from you. Yep. Formed consent. Yes. So hopefully this is what you were looking for. It was. In this podcast. Rob, thank you so much. And we're going to wrap up this podcast. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Please drop a comment. If you have any more deeper thoughts about this, send me an email. The landscaping employee trap at gmail.com. Specifically about this show. Put a podcast with Rob in the subject line so I know it's you because I get a lot of emails. Hey, I hope you liked the show. And if you like the Untrapped podcast and you get value from it, can you please take a minute and go over to Spotify and leave it a well-worded positive five-star review that helps boost the rankings on Spotify so the show can get to more people. Therefore, these messages can get out to more people and inspire more people so then they can go out and start their small businesses and crush it and get to the next level. It's a huge deal. All right, I'll see you in the next show.